Hello, I'm James Fielden, Managing Director of KPAC, a fine art, antique and valuable item shipping, packing and storage company. In this video, I'm going to talk you through the do's and don'ts of shipping and storing your art and explain how you, as a collector, can use such services with peace of mind. Every artwork is essentially unique. One artwork will differ from another in terms of its size, weight, material, construction or fragility, and indeed in terms of its value. An art shipper will need to understand this and to be able to deal with the variety and complexity of shipments which are required. Art shippers employ trained technicians and art handlers to carry out their work carefully and effectively, which usually begins at the collection, generally being at the client's place of residence. If you're shipping art for the first time, make sure you research which shipper to use. Good guidance is usually available from the gallery or art fair where you purchased the work, or from your insurance company, which will probably have a list of approved shippers. If you made an informed decision, you will be able to trust your shipper. If you want to ship art overseas, discuss what you need with your shipper of choice. It's worth doing this before you acquire an artwork so that you know how much to budget for those additional costs. There are customs issues to be dealt with when shipping overseas, and for artworks and antiques you may need an export license. Every country has a different customs regime, and the destination country may require the payment of import VAT and or duties, but your shipper should have experience in working through these often complex arrangements and ought to be able to handle them for you. Shippers are working hard to use greener processes and methods. At the moment, the most environmentally friendly choice would be to consolidate your shipment and send them via sea. Obviously, this takes a lot longer than air freight, so it's not appropriate for time-sensitive consignments, though it is always worth discussing all the options with your shipper. Remember to check the associated insurance costs for each option. Historically, Sea Freight has received a higher premium from insurers, although some underwriters are re-evaluating the situation to encourage more sustainable shipping. The industry is also rethinking its use of packing materials. To date, individual shipments have utilised single-use, one-way crates. But if shipments are consolidated, with many works going together, multi-use crates can be used. If you're looking to store art, I always recommend that clients visit the physical premises where the artwork is to be stored. You'll have an instinctive feeling about whether the location is secure, suitable, and the environmental conditions have been appropriately considered. If you feel confident, ask to view the security measures that are in place in terms of both physical and electronic protection. It may sound obvious, but you need to know the premises are locked and alarmed and whether any fire detection is in place. Is there CCTV? Who has access to the property? Have the company staff had criminal records or background checks? You should ask about other items held at the storage location and ideally not store art with general goods and certainly not in a facility that houses hazardous or flammable substances. When you're sure about these things, you can ask specific questions to determine whether the environment is suitable for your art. Is it ambient, temperature controlled or fully climate controlled? Full climate control is commonly required by museums and you may well need it if you want to store works on paper, although bear in mind that this is the most expensive option. There are lots of options out there for shipping and storage and realistically you'll get what you pay for. So, tempting as it may seem, do not try to cut corners, but do try to get to know your shipper and storage expert. If you do that, it will make the process a lot smoother, stress-free and plain sailing. 